The GSR is the most manly evolution of the new Beatle. Now, granted, that's like saying there's a most manly Katy Perry song, but it's clearly an idea that has a lot of power and a lot of appeal. In fact, it's something that has been worked on since right after World War II. That's when Porsche engineers, starting with the original Beetle, came up with this, the 356. These days, souping up a Beetle is pretty easy. Grab a 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder off the shelf, apply some decals, and there you have it. It was a little harder in 1947 when Porsche started working on the 356. For one thing, Porsche wasn't the Porsche we know today. It was a bunch of guys working out of an old sawmill in Austria. For another, this was two years after the end of World War II, and Europe was desperately poor. Ferry Porsche and his team started with the humble Volkswagen, not because it was anything special. In fact, it was deadly slow, but rather because it was cheap and because it was all they had to work with. And work with it they did. Porsche heavily modified the flat four engine, cut nearly a foot out of the wheelbase, and dropped a smooth new body on it. Over the next two decades, they continued to tweak and polish the Volkswagen into a world-class sports car. Though the methods are different, the goal is the same. Turn the cute Beetle into something that might attract a young car enthusiast. Someone like Bill Kinley, who bought his first Porsche when he was in college in the 60s, and who owns this 1964 356 SC today. You notice this is, not only is it a monocoque frame, meaning it doesn't have a separate frame, it's all integral structural components, but the body itself, all the panels are welded together without seams. So if I if you start here, you can trace your way all the way down past the front bumper, top and bottom, without ever crossing a seam. So what do you think about our car, the GSR? It's an interesting car. You, know, you look at it in, in a sense, it takes us a lot of, design, of its design cues from the 356. If you look at the headlights, they're slanted, they're lean back, the hood style could be said to be similar. It's somewhat reminiscent. I'm not sure I'm a, a big fan of the entire design. A lot of it is for effect, like a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of current cars. There's also a big difference in the engine bays, and not just because one's in front and one's in back. The simplicity of, of working on the older cars, of course, appeals to people who are car fans. This is a little bit more of looks like a plumber's convention took hold of it. Bill's car is the last and most powerful of the 356s. It has a 1.6 liter flat four that makes about 95 horsepower, which is amazing when you consider that the Volkswagen started with about 25. Driving it today, the 356 does feel slow, but it's still amazingly precise. The unassisted steering is really direct. The brakes are good for their time too. The last 356s had disc brakes at all four wheels. Lift off the throttle and you instantly feel the whole drivetrain lurch. Yep, don't do that in a turn. Today's Beetle feels like a rocket ship compared to yesterday's Porsche. And it should, since it has 210 horsepower. It also handles really well, which makes sense since it's basically a Volkswagen Golf under the skin. But in comparison to the 356, in which everything has been fussed over, you get the feeling in the GSR that everything hasn't been quite so polished. The throttle is slow to react, and the steering isn't as crisp as it could be. It's amazing how Porsche was able to do so much with so little. The original Beetle was never intended to be anything more than very basic transportation, and yet Porsche made the 356 out of it. With the current Beetle, it's actually the opposite. It's a really good car underneath the skin, and the GSR treatment with its decals and its duckbill spoiler brings that charm out. The 356 and the GSR may have started out life as Beetles, but they both evolved into fun cars that you want to drive, and that, just as important, you want to be seen driving.